At this point, you've gone over the general concepts of PIDs, how they work with Opto22 controllers, and how they run on I.O. brains. In this lesson, we'll review a few of the PID concepts and then explain the exercises we'll be doing next. In review, the Groove Epic and Snappack R controllers are actually made up of two processors, one for the controller side and the other for the I.O. unit side. When you create your strategy, you download it to the controller side, and when commands for I.O. points are executed, they're handled by the I.O. processor. If your strategy uses a remote I.O. unit, such as a Groove Rio, then commands for points on that unit are executed by its own processor. The PIDs configured in Pack Control actually run on the I.O. unit side, independently of the controller. Where you can see how that makes a difference is when you have remote I.O. units running PIDs. If communication to the controller is interrupted like we see on the first I.O. unit, the PIDs on the remote unit keep running until the unit is powered off. You can have up to 96 PIDs running on Groove Epic I.O. and Snappack I.O. units, and up to 4 PIDs on Groove Rio units. You can choose from four PID math algorithms that are available. Neither one is better for a particular type of process. It's more what you're comfortable with. Maybe you've worked with one of them before and you're used to how changing the parameter values affect the results. The default algorithm is velocity type C. Think of a PID like the cruise control in your car. Your desired speed is like the set point. Your current speed, the input, or process variable is affected by changes on the road, such as driving up and down hills or headwinds. Your cruise control does the calculations to increase the speed, the output, so that your car can maintain the desired speed. In this simple tank heating system, the input, or process variable, is the temperature of the water in the tank, and the set point is set by a thermostat. The PID algorithm calculates the difference, or error, between the set point and input values. Using the error, the algorithm makes calculations to generate an output. The output affects the process to get the input closer to the set point. The calculations done by the PID algorithm are referred to as the modes of control, the proportional, P term, the integral, the I term, and the derivative, d term. How much each term influences the output is determined by the p, i, and d tuning constants, values that you'll enter to tune your PID. The p term is the output's proportional response to the error. In the example here, think of the triangle as the p or gain value. Where it equals the set point, the gain is one. And like a teeter-totter, if the triangle moves to the left, in the negative direction, the other side, the output, goes up, as it's needed for a heater application. Depending on which PID algorithm you choose, the gain has a different effect, but essentially the gain and error are multiplied. Going back to our heating system, if the process variable is below the set point, in other words, the water bath is too cold, the error is a negative number. To increase the heater output, we need to change the gain. Do we start with a positive value or a negative value? So, in this example, making the gain, the p, a negative number will give us the results we want. Negative gain times a negative error results in a positive, increased output, in this case, heating. Some devices can use just the p term, such as a mechanical system with a float on a tank valve, but usually, proportional control doesn't fully correct a system. Using only the gain could cause the process variable to stabilize at the wrong value. This is called a steady state error, or offset. To correct this, we want to look at the error over time. By comparing the readings of error over time, it's actually looking at the area under the curve, or the integral. As you sample more, increase the scan rate, the area under the curve is more accurate. Use the I term to help the process variable approach the set point. How the I term affects the output depends on the algorithm used. 
For the velocity algorithm, the I constant is the value you'll set. For starters, choose a value between 0 and 1. Many times, using the P and I terms alone is sufficient. But some systems can overshoot the set point, causing too much over and under correction. In the real world, this can lead to excessive wear on equipment. But there's a third term that can be used. The D term, or derivative, is based on the rate of change, or slope of the process variable. This slope coincides with the speed that the process variable is either approaching or departing from the set point. The D term adjusts how much it affects the output. The derivative lets you add bigger proportional integral values for a faster response and better performance while keeping the loop stable. All right, armed with this knowledge, we're going to use it as we work with PIDs. First, we're going to configure a PID with pack control. Then, we'll work with the built-in PID tuner in debug mode. The PID that you're going to set up will control a desired temperature. The ICTD temperature probe included with the Learning Center has a resistor epoxied next to it in the probe tip. That resistor is wired to an output point so that the PID can control the heat that it generates. We're going to go over setting up two types of PIDs. One is a TPO PID, which uses a digital output point to change the process. You can use your Groove Epic Learning Center to do this. And the other is a PID that uses an analog output. For this exercise, I'll set it up using a Groove Rio remote I.O. unit because it has analog output points. You can use any other remote I.O. unit such as Snappack Brains or Snappack R controllers with I.O. units. Let's talk about these two types of PIDs a little more. TPO stands for Time Proportional Output. Based on a period of time, what percentage of that time will it be on? You'll set up a period and a percentage for the TPO. For example, if your TPO's time period is set to 10 seconds and the TPO percentage is set to 30%, then the digital output point is turned on for 3 seconds and then turned off for 7 seconds. The TPO PID controls the digital output so that the temperature stays near the set point. TPO PIDs are very commonly used, especially to control a heating element, like for an oven or a solenoid to control flow or pressure. Because of the way we'll be setting up the PID, we'll have to add a chart in the strategy with control logic for the PID. I'll point out that in this case, the PID running on the I.O. unit is not independent of the controller because it relies on the commands in the chart. The other type of PID is when the PID's output is wired to an analog output point. The beauty of this type of PID is that your PID will just keep working because it runs independently on the I.O. unit that it's configured on. Both the analog input and analog output reside on the I.O. unit, and if for some reason communication to the controller is interrupted, the PID keeps working until it's manually stopped or powered down. We'll go over configuring a PID on a remote I.O. unit. I'll use a Groove Rio for this exercise, but it's the same concept if you're using Snappack Brains or Snappack R controllers and their I.O. If you have a Snappack Learning Center, your ICTD probe has a resistor wired to an analog output point. After you configure your PID, we'll download the strategy, run it, and start using a built-in PID tuner in debug mode. We'll also go over several resources that are available to help you tune your PIDs. This includes the Opto Forums, and my favorite, a PID tuner to help calculate those PI and D terms. Let's get started.